Hey guys, we'll be reading Just Being Dolly, the story of artist Salvador Dolly by Amy Guiglimo. In a small seaside town on the northern edge of Spain lived a boy with big dreams and an even bigger name. Salvador Domingo Felipe Jacinto Dali Idomenchi. As soon as he could walk, little Salvador wandered along the rocky shores near his home, chasing butterflies and birds. His chubby finger pointed to the sky, tracing puffy clouds as they shifted into prancing horses. At six years old, Salvador yearned to be a cook. But after one too many messes in the kitchen, his father gave him a pet bat to keep him occupied. Then, Salvador fancied being a king, but his father was strict and soon grew tired of all the pretending. Why can't you just behave, he asked. But Salvador was just being himself. At school, Salvador didn't fit in. He was timid and quiet and wanted to play alone. When he wore his costume to class, the other kids teased him and threw grasshoppers in his hair. Why are you so strange, they asked, but Salvador was only being himself. Salvador wasn't a serious student, and he disliked being stuck inside. He found it more interesting to stare at the cracks on the ceiling, arranging the shapes into elephants and faces. He spent hours daydreaming out the window and filling his notebooks with doodles instead of schoolwork. His teachers grew frustrated. Why can't you act like the other students? But Salvador couldn't help being himself. One day, Salvador fell ill. His parents sent him to the countryside to recover. There, he stayed with the family of artist Ramon Pico. Salvador marveled at the vibrant paintings that dotted the walls. And when he grew stronger, Pico taught him how to paint. Suddenly, Salvador realized how he could truly be himself. Artists could be anything they liked, so he decided that's just what he would be. When Salvador painted a pile of cherries and added real stems and worms to the canvas, Pico persuaded Salvador's reluctant father to make him a studio. Back at home, Visions of a hillside kingdom danced from Salvador's mind onto the walls of their old laundry room. From then on, Salvador never stopped drawing. He took classes and sketched everyone in his family. And when he ran out of people to draw, he stood on his head to spark new ideas. A few years later, he was accepted to an art academy in Madrid. At school, he grew his hair long and wore elegant outfits. The other students thought he was odd until they were dazzled by his portfolio. Then he finally made some friends. At first, Salvador threw himself into his studies. He worked tirelessly to master the techniques and to recreate the works of great artists. But he soon grew tired of making art that looked like everyone else's. When Salvador was asked to reproduce a marble sculpture of a woman, he painted a picture of scales instead. He challenged his professors and encouraged his classmates to do the same. Eventually, his rebellious behavior got him expelled. Why can't you just follow the rules, his instructors grumbled. But Salvador kept being himself. More determined than ever, Salvador experimented with different styles. Using the techniques he had learned in school, combined with fantastic images from his dreams. He began creating paintings that were all his own. Salvador moved to Paris, where he met a group of playful artists and writers who also united fantasy and reality into their works. At last, Salvador found others who thought and expressed themselves like he did. They called themselves surrealists. The surrealists wanted people to think about art rather than just look at it. By placing objects in strange and unexpected combinations, Salvador and the other surrealists grabbed the attention of the critics and public alike. Then, Salvador caught the eye of Gala, the woman of his dreams, 
who didn't mind that he often made a scene. She adored how Salvador placed flowers in his hair, and how he wore a cape, a curly mustache, and funny shoes. They fell in love, and Galo became his muse. Despite his talent, Salvador had trouble selling his odd works of art. Back in Spain and nearly penniless, he and Galo moved into an old fishing shack by the sea. One hot night after dinner, Salvador struggled with an unfinished landscape painting. Frustrated, he was about to leave the house when he spotted a plate of cheese that had melted into a blob. That gave him an idea. Salvador painted watches, soft and runny like cheese. He added swarming ants and a mysterious figure in a strange desert setting. He called it the persistence of memory. When Gala came home, she was amazed. I will never forget this painting. Would others agree? Salvador and Gala traveled to America, where the new painting was displayed in a surrealist show in New York City. Though the painting was small, only a little larger than a sheet of paper, it was a sensation. But what did it mean? People had many ideas. I think it's about how time is relative. I think it's about how memories fade. Maybe it's a self-portrait. No one knew for sure, but everyone agreed. Salvador had painted a dream. The persistence of memory became Salvador's masterpiece. When the iconic image found a home at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, people flocked to see it. Salvador became the most famous artist of his time. But soon, Salvador's antics drew more attention than his art. He drew a fancy car stuffed with 1,000 pounds of cauliflower. He gave a speech inside a deep sea diving suit. He took his pet Osculot, Babo, to lunch at snooty restaurants. Eventually, even the surrealists insisted he curb his wild ways or leave their group. Why can't you be more like us, they asked. But Salvador wouldn't stop being himself. Salvador became famous for his eccentric and pioneering ways. He designed lollipop wrappers in exchange for free candy, a lobster phone that really worked, and a hat made out of a shoe. He had little time for painting, as he was too busy appearing on television and having parties. The critics asked, why? Why do you have to act outrageous? What's the point of all this silly behavior? Why do you do all these things? They told him, stick to art. But Salvador didn't mind, and his fans didn't either. After all, he was just being himself. The end. Thanks for listening.